Mr. Investor, welcome back to the channel. You are going to love this video. It's on bio nanogenomics. We've been emailing around. Um, we've been looking at bio nanogenomics customers and seeing how useful they find optical genome mapping and how many sapphire systems they have. What's the usage going to be like? So we can make some calculations or we can present this to you for entertainment only and you can make your calculations and take a look deeper into optical genome mapping. So now before we begin, um, I just want to remind you guys it's for entertainment only this video, only for entertainment. And uh, if you find this video useful, please hit me with a thumbs up, click subscribe, drop me some comments down below. And um, if you can also donate, it really helps out the channel. We barely make any money from this channel at all in terms of AdSense because we don't get a lot of views. It's very specific. It's on bio nanogenomics, most of the videos. For everybody that's donated already, um, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys. If you're able to become channel members, it also helps out a lot. So thank you for supporting content creation. And if you'd like to donate and you haven't before, in my description box down below is a PayPal link where you can send me donations directly and I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Let's get into the nitty gritty. A few of you that have been on the channel for quite a while and you've been following updates on bionanogenomics may know this assistant professor called Adam Smith from the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology Molecular Genetics. He's based in Toronto running the University Health Network. So one of our subscribers, thank you so much Anil, um, sent me an email and then I managed to follow up on that email and I got a great conversation out of um, Adam. To give you a background, uh, Dr. Smith is currently the director of Cancer Cytogenetics Laboratory at the University Health Network. He is a dual boarded clinical cytogeneticist and a clinical molecular geneticist and he's certified by the Canadian College of Medical Geneticists. So a fellow at the American College of Genetics and Genomics and a certified laboratory geneticist by the European Board of Medical Genetics. The gentleman has been using the Sapphire system for a while now and he believes that optical genome mapping is revolutionary. So Adam said he's already implemented optical genome mapping clinically for one clinical indication MLN TK. Next, he stated that he's waiting on a second installation of the Sapphire system, so a second instrument to be installed to give him more capacity to switch the rest of his tests in terms of myeloid indications to optical genome mapping as frontline, including AML, MDS, MPN, MDS slash MPN. He thinks that the technology is also a game changer. They have most of the Canadian labs also following their leads. There's a lot of excitement in the community about optical genome mapping. So why is this interesting? There's demand here. You can see there that he demands a second instrument in order to fulfill um, the current client base that he has in order to help you know the patients that he has. And he wants to switch over his tests to optical genome mapping, some of these uh, kind of cancer cytogenetic tests. Now, the next thing we can get from this initial email is, you know, the demand is great and he's waiting on that installation. So so it's either they've already purchased it or it's there and they're waiting for a technician to come and install it or to set everything up. Now, the other thing that shows that optical genome mappings in demand is he stated that most Canadian labs are also following the university health network. So this is really interesting as a statement. It's like they have um, set the trend, they've shown, you know, the data, um, how they're currently utilizing it as well and why it's valid and stating that they're transforming their workflow and they're going to be utilizing it as a frontline technology. Adam then went on to say that you can comment that we're offering some testing by optical genome mapping and they're in the process of transitioning many of their indications for leukemia and lymphoma. Here's a little infographic which might be helpful for your discussion. Next generation sequencing really misses the structural variation piece of the puzzle. I know there are a lot of people bullish that structural variation detection by next generation sequencing will be possible, but the problems that they're currently facing with this next generation sequencing is costs and TAT. TAT is turnover time or turnaround time. It really isn't feasible in cancer where we need a depth of 300 to 500x coverage to detect the rare alleles and for samples with low infiltration of cancer cells. So we can see this little diagram here. Feel free to pause the video to take a look. Next generation sequencing panels are good at detecting single nucleotide variants and insertion deletions, but are not good at detecting large structural variation. On the right are just three examples of structural variation overlapping critical biomarkers in AML that can't be detected by next generation sequencing, but are easily detected by optical genome mapping. Optical genome mapping plus next generation sequencing is critical for accurately characterizing AML patients. All 
of the rearrangements on the right detected by OGM are far below the resolution of conventional methods, i.e. karyotype. So I think we're taking a look here. I think this is abbreviated to inversion. Um, and then here in the middle, it says deletion, ASXL1 deletion. At the bottom, it's B core deletion. In terms of the basis, you can see here 38,262 base pairs. At the bottom, it says one mega base pair. And then I followed up. I said, I wanted to thank him for the help. I appreciate it. Just wondering at the current moment, what do you estimate is the number of flow cells annually you need to help serve your patient's needs? I also stated, will there be additional uses for optical genome mapping, like expansion into helping patients with other comorbidities? Just wanted to say, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like if you haven't already. It really helps with the algorithm. And uh, the next email you're going to see, I think you're going to find particularly useful. So I hope you're enjoying the content. Asked him, how many flow cells are you using per year annually? He said, we are currently projecting 1,500 flow cells, 500 chips per year. We are working on developing applications for lymphoid tumors, including multiple myeloma. I was awarded a Grand Challenge grant recently to support development of optical genome mapping for use in myeloma. This could add an additional 300 to 500 samples per year. So if we take a look in a couple years ahead, they said they feel in a couple years, in a few years, they'll likely be running 2,000 to 2,500 genomes per year on optical genome mapping. So with this grand challenge grant that um, Adam managed to get, the D Caspers, D Jaspers grand challenge multiple myeloma grant, he got $2 million in research funding from Helga and Antonio de Gasperis. You can see the five researchers here from the Princess Market Cancer Center. They've been awarded the combined total of $2 million. We can see what for it says here, Dr. Adam Smith will use the new technology of optical genome mapping to improve diagnostic testing. And Mr. Investalot had to ask him some follow-up questions. I sent a follow-up email because I just wanted to know a little bit more. And uh, I was so grateful for him, you know, devoting time and giving me these you know, huge chunks of information and breaking it down for me as well. So I told him, thank you for the fantastic news. Congratulations on the Grand Challenge grant. Just trying to get a perspective of cytogenomics in Canada as well. How many cytogenomics labs roughly are there in Canada that could possibly convert to optical genome mapping workflow? Is UHN a collection network of hospitals for Toronto area only? I think you guys are really paving the way for the world to follow. I was speaking to an NHS scientist who is piloting and trying to incorporate optical genome mapping for HEMA malignancies, but they said the current Sapphire system doesn't meet their needs in terms of throughput and cost yet. They said it's quite expensive to run. Is it $450 to $500 per genome for you? And will you be upgrading to the Stratis, which is the new optical genome mapping system? If this new system is approved, does FDA approval benefit you in terms of reimbursement from insurance? I'm excited to see and follow any updates on your new applications. Please keep me in the loop whenever they come out. Thanks again for the help. And my goodness, this man is so helpful, so genuine and kind for giving us his time and just emailing back. So Adam said to me, hi, Miguel, there's about 20 to 30 cytogenetic labs in Canada. I know that many are or have purchased sapphires. So there are at least 10 sapphires installed in diagnostic labs in Canada right now. The number is growing as well as the applications and evidence grows. I think we'll see most cytogenetic labs go to optical genome mapping over the next two years. He broke down uh, the UHN. He said to me that it's officially four hospitals, Toronto General, Princess Margaret, Toronto Western and Toronto Rehab. But we also provide laboratory services to a lot of the province for hospitals that don't have genetic laboratories and some specialized testing to even hospitals that have genetic services. The cost is tricky depending on the health system and how conventional testing is reimbursed. For us, optical genome mapping is cost comparable to doing a karyotype and one fish test. This is about our average if you take all of our karyotyping and reflex fish testing, it's about even. We are now at $400 per genome. I know for some countries they feel optical genome mapping is expensive. A lot of countries have unrealistically low reimbursement for karyotyping and probably subsidize it in other ways, e.g. via support for technologist salaries that isn't incorporated in the costs for karyotyping services. I was just in Turkey and that was the comment, but they do a karyotype for about 100 US dollars there. The labor cost is very low for them. However, if you look at Holland, Belgium and Spain, they're all moving to optical genome mapping into frontline standard practice. Price isn't the only consideration, there's also clinical utility. So when you consider how much it would cost to do everything optical genome mapping can do, so they have to, they have to combine you know, the traditional cytogenomic tests 
They said with the conventional technology, such as karyotype, fish and array, it's definitely cheaper to do optical genome mapping. Upgrading, and he said, we are hoping to upgrade to the Stratus, probably in 2024. My understanding is that it is just launching now and that the available systems for 2023 will be limited. So there'll be a demand there and there's a limited availability of the new system. Right now we have sufficient capacity with two sapphires, but moving up to the Stratus makes a lot of sense. With the, it should be the new high throughput system. I think it's going to be 13x amount of throughput compared to the sapphire. Approval doesn't really have any effect in Canada. We don't have insurance in the same way it is in the States. And optical genome mapping is technically already reimbursed for most myeloid malignancies. Canada works a bit differently, as a lot of genetics labs work on global budgets. Annual payments from the Ministry of Health. So, the ideal state is where optical genome mapping is cost neutral. While it may be more expensive in terms of reagents, in a lot of respects you save money on labour and ancillary testing. Obviously, he said that transitioning is expensive, but in the long term, it makes financial sense. It's an exciting time to be working in this field. Adam, thank you, Adam. There's a lot of information in this email, you know, talking about the cytogenetic labs that he knows of. He said that there's 20 to 30 currently, and uh, he's waiting on an installation for another Sapphire system in order to meet his needs for his clients. He knows that many of these cytogenetic labs are in the, in the process of, or they've already purchased Sapphires. There are at least 10 Sapphires installed in diagnostic labs in Canada right now and the number continues to grow so stating that you know most of the labs are going to convert over to optical genome mapping in terms of the workflow for myelo myeloid malignancies or you know many different blood cancers at cost of 400 dollars per genome let's uh, also take a look at you know what they expect to run at a cost of 400 dollars per genome so previously he said he feels in a few years they're going to run around 2000 to 2500 genomes per year and the cost will be about 400 dollars a genome right that being said that indicates that just his you know university network of those four hospitals or the services that he provides to the neighboring kind of provinces that's one million dollars in you know just uh, the flow cells alone that they're utilizing the amount of you know genomes they're processing one million dollars worth to be reoccurring annually but it also might scale up as their needs and as you know more applications come through for optical genome mapping they might upgrade to the high throughput system as well so that may also indicate that they're going to be using you know more they're going to be getting more samples be running more samples and ultimately using more flow cells now this is just uh, his kind of lab but Imagine if all the labs are servicing Canada um, just like he is. But imagine the kind of usage of optical genome mapping, the, the demand of optical genome mapping for the labs um, in his region. Imagine all across Canada if it's similar for those 20 to 30 labs. Let's say there's 30 labs. Canada alone, just with those 2,500 genomes, $400 a pop. And if you're doing that for 30 different labs, that's $30 million coming just out of Canada annually. So now we have, I think they were aiming at 8,000 or 10,000 cytogenetic labs, something like that. So if we were to say that we got Sapphire systems and they were looking at just blood cancer, so we're focusing on it and say that Belgium, Spain, parts of Europe, they start to convert their workflow over and they're still running, you know, about 2,500 uh, genomes for each lab. Say that we have around about 250 Sapphire systems doing that. That's going to be $250 million in revenue. And, you know, the time scale, the kind of time frame, I don't know how far behind others are or how long it will take for them to develop and get it installed and start to convert their workflow over as well, because it might take a few years, you know. But for Adam, stated in the next few years, they're expecting that run rate of 2,500 samples. So if the promise of bio-nanogenomics, if they're able to survive and, and last, you know, because they're doing this raising capital at the moment uh, they've blown through their money but now they need some cash to continue their plan um if they're able to do this globally and there's 10,000 cytogenetic labs that they're targeting um i'm not sure how many of them you know are research based or some of them might be you know uh, connected to the hospitals and doing stuff like this for cancer i think pharma companies as well are also interested in optical genome mapping and they might have a higher run rate as well but can you imagine for a million dollars in revenue from just one of these labs what happens if you get 10,000 labs involved or even just you know if we could get 1,000 or even 500 labs involved at this kind of run rate the question is will bio nanogenomics then at that time become profitable can they last until that time where you know they've built this blue ocean this market and just to put this into perspective as well in India they want to improve the quality of treatment 
and they want to create uh, several more um, of these centers for high quality blood cancer treatment. I'm going to cover this in the next video, but the chairman, Dr. Sashin Jadhav, spoke to the um, Health Economic Times in India, the Indian Times, and he spoke about optical genome mapping and this new advanced technique for looking at so-called mutations in cancer. Looking at future projections though, will they be able to bring down the costs of optical genome mapping to $100 per genome? That would be a question, you know, for the future when they start to scale up, if they can find ways to cut costs in producing those flow cells as well, or make new flow cells that might be better. The way that they say they're kind of saving and uh, where some people are not accounting for is the kind of technologists and the salaries that they have to have these kind of highly specialized people um, trained up in utilizing, you know, some of the traditional cytogenetic technologies. So with optical genome mapping, they said it's kind of easier workflow, uh, it's cheaper to do, especially if you have multiple tests that you need to do all together. So now I hope you found this useful. Um, some final points I just want to say is thank you so much for always supporting the channel. Thank you so much for, for watching my content and I'm glad that you know, it can help some people out there for entertainment purposes only. I currently have 54,000 shares of BioNanoGenomics. I'm still holding on to my shares. Um, there's a reverse split happening soon, I believe. I'm not sure if it's a 10 to 1 or 5 to 1 reverse split. But ultimately, what I think is going to happen is as soon as they reverse split, they're going to get on it quick and they'll have their finger on the ATM facility, uh, literally just selling as much as they can stock at the market value. Um, and I think that the value of it is going to drop significantly when they start to sell and uh, we're going to get shorted quite significantly. So stock price could potentially drop, I don't know, another 20, 30 percent. It could be heavily shorted. But then the money worries will go away for a little bit. As long as they can keep the spending under control and they can focus on the growth and development of the company, more adoption, finding more applications for optical genome mapping and showing it to the right people, getting in front of the right labs. Some of these labs just pick up grants like that and they'll be able to buy Sapphire systems, start to experiment, utilize it. And when they're ready, you know, start to invest in uh, buying maybe multiple machines or upgrading to the new machine and ultimately and hopefully helping a lot of patients and being able to make money along the way. So for me, that's what I'm holding on to. That's what's exciting. But where will the inflection point be? Where will be the time when, you know, the Sapphire system or, or the new one, the Stratus, will kind of be adopted by all of these high throughput labs and will be utilized a lot? Uh, when will that time be? And at what point will we see the inflection point where we see a lot of adoption, we see revenues grow and we see a decrease in the costs um, because right now we're burning, we're losing a lot of money, we're burning it all the time. So I'm just thinking, when is going to be that time where we start to see profitability, if we're going to see profitability? And how will the company start to return value to the shareholders? Uh, when will that time be? I'm not sure. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this videos. I hope they help out. And if you're able to donate, if you're able to support the channel in any way possible, I really appreciate it. I want to thank you so much. And everybody that sends me information and asks me to take a look at this and that, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the donations before as well. If you'd like to donate, please click the PayPal link down below and I'll catch you in the next video. Mr. Investalot, over and out, baby.